I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have known me, you will also know my Father. You believe, don't you, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Truly, truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Even greater works than these shall he do. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, in order that the Father might be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will ask the Father to give you another helper, to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. But you recognize him, because he lives with you and will be in you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Even greater works than these shall he do. Jennifer Neal is reporting live from the Long Beach Harbor where a man's body was recovered earlier today. Jennifer, what's the latest development? The body that was found floating in the harbor this morning has been identified as Aldo Morano. The medical examiner's office has determined the cause of death to be multiple gunshot wounds to the chest. Homicide detectives working on the case indicated that Morano had ties to the mafia and is most likely a victim of organized crime. No comments yet on a possible motive. Simon, Rachel, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Jennifer. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just call upon Superman or Spider-Man to swoop in and stop all the senseless killing that's going on? Yeah, that would be nice. I know my son would love that idea. 
uh, let's go to Tom and see what the weather is going to look like this coming week. Tom? Did you fix yourself dinner yet? No, not yet. How about I pick up a couple burgers on the way home? Yum. Thanks, Mom. Oh, honey, did you start your homework? Just about to. OK, I'll see you in an hour. OK. Mom? Yeah? I love you. I love you too, honey. Bye. <laughs> Miss Jackson, she considers hamburgers child abuse. Ah, well, she'll be happy to hear you're not eating chocolate anymore, huh? What are you studying? The pilgrims. Did you know that God told them to leave Europe and come to America? Hmm. Well, I'm happy they followed God's advice. Me too. <laughs> hey, Mom, how do I know when God wants to tell me something? I don't know. Um, they might talk about it in the Bible. But, you know, let's not go there, OK? Why not? Because that was written a really long time ago by a group of people who tried to explain things about God that they didn't really understand. What does Dad think about it? Oh, better not get him started on the subject. He's not a big fan of Christians. <laughs> Why? Are they mean? Well, no, no, most of them are actually really nice. But uh, they do like to try to tell other people how to live their lives which is why we try to stay away from them, OK? Steady. Why are you asking? I started reading the Bible last night. Do you believe it's true? Bible? What are you reading the Bible for? He's just studying the pilgrims for his history class. Oh. I just want to know more about what Christians believed. Hmm. Well, that's easy. Christians believe that you're a bad person if you don't go to church every Sunday, and if you don't give money to pastors so that they can make you feel guilty. That's not what I was reading. Well, better stick to reading your comics. I'm sure they're much more entertaining. <laughs> yeah. But what if God wanted to talk to me and tell me what to do? Well, there is no God, Brian. It's just us, and we decide what we want to do. How about people that decide to do bad things, like killing that man they found in the harbor yesterday? Well, that's different. These guys are a bunch of criminals. If we could teach criminals not to kill each other, that would be nice, but they refuse to learn. Exactly. Maybe it's because they're not learning what God wants them to do. No, they just shouldn't go around committing crimes, that's all. But you said everyone should get to do whatever they want. Yeah, everyone except you, Brian. Stop reading that Bible, all right? He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Even greater works than these shall he do. Brian. Are you okay? I'm okay. Hey, glasses. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Darren. What you got for us today, Four Eyes? One barbecue, one sour cream. Make it chocolate next time. But I'm not allowed to have chocolate. Well, then be clever about it. Yeah, I thought you were the brain in your class. Next time, make it chocolate or your shins will have an accident. 
And then you'll really know what pain's all about. <laughs> What's wrong? Ethan and Darren pushed me. I dropped my homework and they took off with it. Maybe they hid it somewhere. Miss Jackson won't believe that I did my homework. Neither will my dad. What about your mom? My mom died a long time ago. I'm sorry. Um, let's go tell Miss Jackson. I'm sure she'll understand. Okay. These Puritans were responsible for the deaths of many innocent people, falsely accused of witchcraft. Today, the Salem witch trials stand as a grave warning against the dangers of religious fanaticism. Can anyone think of any other examples of religious fanaticism in history? Anybody? Yes, Brian. Jesus was nailed to a cross because of religious fanaticism. That is an interesting way of looking at things. Anybody else? Well, in that case, why don't you all do some research on the subject and turn in a 200-word essay due by tomorrow. Jackson? Yes. How can you tell between someone who is religious and someone who is a fanatic? Fanatics have a tendency to want to force others to believe what they believe. Don't you want us to believe what you're teaching? My goal is to teach you the truth, nothing else. Have you ever read the Bible? <laughs> I tend to focus my studies on less biased material. I just started reading it. Did you know that by believing in Jesus, we could do the things that he did? Even greater things. Be careful. You don't want to become a fanatic. tell your patients the truth. What do you ask? Miss Jackson says she wants to teach us the truth. But I don't think she knows the truth. <laughs> what do you mean? She's never even read the Bible. Are you still reading the Bible? But mom, strong man can't raise people from the dead. Jesus is way more powerful than him. Okay, look, your dad and I just don't want you to do something that you might regret one day. But what if not doing it is something I will regret?
Hey, buddy. Hey, Dad. What are you doing? Shouldn't you be in bed by now? I just finished an assignment. You usually get those done way before now. What happened? I did tons of research on this one. Oh, you did? It must be a very important one. Let me see. Didn't I tell you not to read the Bible? Dad, it's super interesting. You know how many people have died because of that book? I just want to know the truth. I'm taking this. You're not turning this in. What do you want me to do? God bless you, son. Thank you. Well, sir, what can I do for you? I was wondering, the statue outside? Is that Jesus healing the blind man near Jericho? It is. Boy, it's good to see a kid like you know a little something about the Bible. Do you heal the blind here? We do not heal the blind here. Aren't we supposed to do the things that Jesus did? Yeah, we are. But when you get a little older, you'll learn that God uses people a little differently these days. My dad thinks he uses them to give money to pastors so that they can make you feel guilty. Ron, here what I try to do is make people feel less guilty and more forgiven. Wouldn't you spend less time on that if people just did what God wants them to do? I sure would. Is that what you want to do, what God wants you to do? Yes, but my parents don't want me to. Hmm. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I believe. He even talks to me sometimes. He does? You better listen. And you better do what he tells you to do exactly. You hear me? Do you mind if I take a look around? This is my first time in a church. I don't mind at all. I think you should. Make yourself at home, son. God bless you. I used to struggle with such simple things, you know? Must be difficult. Yeah, it is. Especially for my wife. She's not really used to seeing me like this. Yeah, I pray that God will just show her that, you know, even bad things can be used for his glory. He will answer your prayer. Please make Christy happy again.
Brian, I saved this one just for you. Thanks, Ivan, but do you have a Bible instead? A Bible? You sure you don't want the comic? It's a vintage edition. Sorry, but no superhero can do what Jesus can. Jesus? Hmm. Didn't he die a long time ago? Yes, but he is risen. He's alive. Oh. I would be less surprised if Spider-Man walked through the door than Jesus. But since you seem to believe that he's alive again, I will give you a Bible on the house. <laughs> if I could find one. <laughs> uh, here somewhere. Ah, here it is. If you happen to see Jesus, you must promise to bring him by the store. I wouldn't mind meeting him. I pray that he'll show himself to you. Mm. Thanks, Ivan. This book is worth so much more than any comic will ever be. Well, I make more money on comics. Choice, Brian. Thanks, Mrs. Young. A story beyond belief happened at Blessed Hope Church earlier this afternoon. Our own Sarah James is live at Blessed Hope. Sarah, what exactly happened over there? Yes, hi, Simon. I'm here with Pastor Chuck McWhorter, the pastor of Blessed Hope Church, and Captain James Iverson and his wife, Christy. Captain Iverson lost his leg in Afghanistan not too long ago, and today it grew back right here in this church, after an encounter with an unidentified young boy. Is this right, Captain? That's right. Um, I was in the church, sort of talking with the little boy, and uh, when he walked out, my legs started burning, and uh, suddenly it just, just grew back. I'm still in shock about the whole thing. Obviously, so is my wife. It's a miracle. Thank you. Pastor McWhorter, you've been a pastor for over 50 years. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, never. And how do you explain something like a leg growing back? I can't explain that. And how does the boy fit into this? Do you know him? I don't know him. I've never seen him before. Who is this mystery boy? And how is he connected to this unusual event that happened here at Blessed Hope earlier today? Those are just a few of the many questions that have yet to be answered. This is Sarah James reporting for KLA 7 News. Thank you, Sarah. With us today is Professor Martin Westhoff, a research professor at the UCLA Medical Center. He's hoping to shine some light on this event. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Well, thank you, Professor, for joining us on such short notice. Before we get started, let's have a look at one more clip that just came in. We have Captain Iverson's doctor, Dr. Kulkarni, commenting on the situation. Dr. Kulkarni, you've been working on Captain Iverson's recovery ever since he returned from Afghanistan. Is this true? Did his leg really grow back? Look, I know it's hard to believe, but yes, it's true. His leg did grow back to normal. Captain Iverson lost his leg six months back in a machine gun fire. 
we had to amputate his leg. I have all the x-rays and pictures right here to show you that his leg was amputated six months back. Have you ever heard of a limb growing back before? Never. Never in my life. How do you explain something like this from a medical perspective? Well, I cannot. This is, it's, it's very mind-blowing, you know? Honestly, I really don't know how to, how to explain this. It's beyond our understanding. Professor Westop, what are your thoughts on all of this? Find the boy. Bring him into the studio, ask him to heal someone. It won't happen. The kid probably doesn't even exist. I'm sorry, Professor, uh, but what about the evidence Dr. Kulkarni just presented us with? What evidence? For all we know, those x-rays that the doctor refers to could easily be from a different patient. In all my years of research, I have never come across a scientifically documented case of a human limb actually growing back. Animal limbs, yes, but human limbs, no. This is most likely an elaborate hoax. A hoax? So you are ruling out any possibility that this indeed might be a miracle? You have to understand that there is no such thing as a miracle. The universe, which is nothing but matter, really, operates via natural physical laws. Any event which may seem supernatural and which people would define as a miracle is in reality a natural occurrence and nothing more. Well, we want to find out what our viewers have to say about this. Do you believe in miracles? Go to KLA7.com and tell us what you think. Hey, Frank. I know it was last minute, but where did you find Westhoff? What do you mean? He's the head of his department at UCLA, and we needed somebody to balance off the miracle story. Oh, I get it. You also think this is a hoax. Look, I don't know. What I do know is that we can't wind up looking like some Christian network. Oh, trust me. No one would be more opposed to that than me. But if we start accusing someone of a hoax, and it's not, we start losing our credibility. Well, apparently, our competition isn't very worried about that. Let me show you what your nemesis, uh, Robert Brookwood, had to say about this. With Easter coming up this weekend, KLA7 is clearly playing the religious angle in an effort to boost their ratings uh, with their latest story on a soldier with his leg allegedly growing back. This is completely ridiculous and bizarre. But I promise you, I will get to the bottom of this so-called miracle. If you want the truth and nothing but the truth, stay tuned to KCLN Channel 9. We're committed to getting it for you. Well, he's getting creamed in the ratings. He has no other choice but to go on attack mode. We have to be the ones to find this boy first and get an exclusive. We can't allow Brookwood to take another story of ours. OK. You got it, Frank. I see not much has changed over the years. So much for the old saying, time heals all wounds. How long since your wife's death? Five years today. I'm sorry for your loss. How is your daughter? She's fine. So what brings you to Los Angeles? I wanted to personally thank you for your attempt to quelch KLA's miracle story. Miracle? Certainly didn't help Emily. We need you to go a step further, Robert. 
destroy the kid. We can't run the risk of this story making national headlines. Can I count on you? You bet. No matter what the cost. No matter what the cost. Good. Keep up the good work. Hi, Mom. Brian, are you reading a Bible? Hmm, if your dad sees this, he's going to be so disappointed in you. But, Mom, it's super amazing. Hmm. Where'd you get this old thing from, anyway? Ivan's. <laughs> I'd wish you'd go back to reading comics. What for? Totally lame. Okay. Just don't let your dad see, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here's an update on the healing at Blessed Hope Church. Surveillance footage shows the boy coming out of the church at 316 today, which is around the time the supposed miracle took place. Unfortunately, the image is not clear, and it's impossible to make out his face. If anybody has any information that could lead to the identity of this boy, please contact the KLA-7 hotline immediately. Our that kind of looks like, um, your friend from school. What's his name? The Tommy? Does it? Mm. I don't know. It was blurry. Well, I better go to bed. It's getting late. Okay. Good night. Oh, don't forget to brush your teeth, OK? I won't. Okay. I love you. Oh, I love you too. Sleep good. Got some chocolate for us? Got something even better. What is it? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That won't cut it. We said chocolate. I take it you want your shins kicked, glasses. Not really, but if you have to, go ahead. God wants me to forgive you. We don't want your forgiveness, you freak. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Hurry up. I can't keep my leg up much longer. You'd be better off praying for a speedy recovery. Pray for a speedy recovery. <laughs> Ethan and Darren. I'm sorry. Well done, class. Most of you did a great job on your assignment. I need to talk to you after class. What happened? It's not like you not to turn in your paper. I wrote it, but my dad didn't want me to turn it in. Why would he not want you to turn in your assignment? It was too religious for him. Too religious? But the assignment was to expose religious fanaticism. Yes, but I found out that most Christians are not fanatical enough. What about the horrors of the Salem witch trials? These people were obviously not following the teachings of Christ. It's not fair to judge all Christians by a few bad examples. You do have a point. Christians have done good things for society. I wish my dad would understand that. Do you want me to talk to him? God will work it out. Do you mind? Not at all. I saw what happened with Ethan and Darren. It was an accident. I couldn't keep my leg up any longer. Yeah, I know. That was funny. I hope they'll be OK. Don't worry about them. They got what they deserved. So you really believe in God, huh? Yeah, 
I started reading the Bible a couple of days ago. My, my parents aren't too happy about it. Why not? They think that Christians are a bunch of bossy people telling others how to live their life. They don't understand that what Jesus told people to do is super cool. Like what? Like to forgive when people are mean. Instead of getting mad, you forgive them. Like what you did with Ethan and Darren? Exactly. It says that you're supposed to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's cool. You ought to read it. You would love it. Yeah, although my dad wouldn't like it. Thanks for healing the captain. I used to think Strongman was amazing, but he's not. You are. Show you something? I guess so. It's outside. Come. Oh. A statue? I know it's just a statue. But if Jesus healed the spine man, he can heal your baby. <laughs> you will experience God's love in a powerful way. Now go home and pray for your baby. Hey there, don't leave yet. Young captain asked me to thank you if I ever saw you again. Tell him there's no need to thank me. It was all God. I know. I told him that. I better get going or else I'll be in big trouble. Trouble for what? My parents would be furious if they knew I was out of church, especially my dad. Well, what does your dad do? He's a news anchor. He works for KLA 7 News. But don't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. Can you pray for them so they can believe in Jesus too? That's what I do, son. I'd have to know their names. Their names are Simon and Patricia. By the way, what's your name? Promise not to tell anyone. I promise. My name is Brian. Brian Weber. Brian Weber, I'm very glad to meet you. And I will. I'll pray for you and your parents. Thank you. Remember, to him who much is given, much will be expected. Jose, Jose. What's going on? Come, we need to pray for Miguel. Look, 
we've got to tone down this God stuff. I mean, we're newsmen, we're not evangelists. It's hard to tell people about a leg growing back without bringing God into it. Look, I'm getting pressure from above not to become your local Christian news channel. If we're not careful, we might wind up encouraging people to go to church and that would be bad, real bad. Yeah, but this is the story everyone's talking about. The ratings are through the roof. I know, but the uppers are ticked. Don't they like good ratings? They do, but not for the wrong reasons. If we don't cover this story, we're gonna send our audience straight to Brookwood. I know, but don't forget, he's got his uppers too. There's been another miracle. What? Maria Mendez, a friend of my cousin's, she went to Blessed Hope Church this afternoon to pray for her baby boy who was born blind. The miracle boy was there. He told her all she had to do was believe and go home and pray for her baby boy. She did, and her baby can see now. Wait, wait, wait. This has to be another one of those crank calls. No, I double-checked with the doctor's office. It's for real. Great. Like one miracle wasn't bad enough, how are we supposed to handle two? Let's get an interview with your cousin's friend and try to set up a, a remote interview with a pastor. I'll get right on it. And Anna. Tell her not to talk to any other reporters, especially Brookwood. You got it. I hope this doesn't cost us our jobs. There has been a report of another miracle that took place at Blessed Hope Church today. It happened earlier this afternoon involving none other than the still unidentified miracle boy that healed Captain Iberson's leg just yesterday. Kevin Tomasaki has the story. That's right. Here with me is Maria Mendez, her husband Jose, and their little baby Miguel. Miguel was born blind just seven months ago, and now he can see. Maria, you were at Blessed Hope Church this afternoon praying for your baby when you met the miracle boy. Uh, yes. He, he started talking to me. He, he told me that, that God loves me and my baby and that God would heal him. And God did. Look. My little Miguel can see. Thank you very much for talking with us. What a heartwarming story. Please stay with us. We, of course, will keep you updated on any late-breaking developments as this compelling story continues to unfold. Reporting live for KLA7 News, this is Kevin Tomasaki. Back to you. Joining us remotely from Blessed Hope Church this evening is Pastor Chuck McWhorter. Good evening, Pastor. Oh, no. Simon, Rachel. I suspect your church is going to be very busy over this Easter weekend. Sure hope so. What are your thoughts on the latest incident at your church? Well, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful to see God at work. We hear that our miracle boy made an appearance at your church again. He did. Did you talk to him? Sure. And what can you tell us about him? I can tell you he's a sweet kid. I can tell you that his faith is pure. You never learn what God can't do. You learn what God can do. He's humble, and he doesn't want any credit. He gives all the glory to God. Did he tell you anything about himself, his name, for instance? Told me his name. So you know who he is? Sure, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I promised him I wouldn't. But Pastor McWhorter, our viewers are anxious to know who he is. I mean, can you at least tell us his first name? No, dear. I'm going to keep my promise to that kid. I'm not going to tell a soul. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sure our viewers are disappointed about that. I don't know how your dad does it. Hey, having to report on miracles like this. Oh, I can't imagine him being any more conflicted. I can. I can't believe he wouldn't give you the boy's name. The clock is ticking, Simon. We've got to find out who this boy is before Brookwood does. Why don't we get Captain Iverson and Maria together with a sketch artist? We might be able to figure out who this kid is. It's brilliant. I'll set it up for tomorrow. Okay. Does he have uh, light or dark eyes? Uh, light. Uh, they're blue, I believe, right? Oh. Any other characteristics? Uh, he had glasses. Uh, he looked really smart. Right, yeah, they were uh, like kind of square with uh, dark rims. Dark rims, okay. See. Something like uh, this, maybe? <laughs> that's him. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. That's crazy. It looks a lot like my son. 
Do you have a photograph? Yeah, sure. That's him. <sighs> yes, that's him. That's definitely him. Brian? No, I was just joking. He's never been to church in his life. That is definitely him. His name is Brian? You gotta see this. Casey Allen has Brookwood interviewing some bookstore owner about the Miracle Boy. Apparently, he went to Isn't the bookstore right? after leaving the church. Yes. I have sold him lots of comics, but the last time he came into the store, he wanted to buy a Bible instead. He kept on about Jesus being real, and he really believed it. So, I gave him a Bible. On the house, of course. <laughs> uh, did he mention his name to you? Only his first name, Brian. Brian? Well, there you have it, folks. Our mystery boy's name is Brian. So if you have any leads as to his identity or his whereabouts, please contact KCLN9 immediately. Find him, bring him down to the studio. We'll get an exclusive. He bought a Bible? Come on, Simon. Let's get moving before somebody goes to KCLN and, and tells them who and where he is. Well, could Maria and I go with you? I, I, yes, please. Yeah, let's go. I'm sure he's at the school. <laughs> yeah, well, he's not answering his cell. Are you sure it's our Brian? Ivan from the bookstore identified him. Brian must have bought a Bible from him. Oh, no, I gotta go. KCLN is already here. Okay. Okay, bye. How in the world could they beat us here? Can you heal a deformed hand? I can't heal anyone. It's God who does the healing. But you did heal a soldier's leg, didn't you? I didn't heal a soldier's leg. God did. But when you pray for people, they get healed, stop. isn't that right? I said stop. You do not have permission to interview my son. This is your son? Yes. Let's go, Brian. Wait a minute. If this is your son, then why didn't you interview him for your show? Because I didn't know it was my son. You, you just found out that this is your son? I didn't know that he is the miracle boy. Now, hold on. He just said he doesn't perform miracles. So what is KLA up to here? Let's go. This is insane. Follow me, Sam. Where are you going with him? None of your business. You can't just abduct a story. Yes, I can. I just did. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? Who's this? What's going on here? Let's get in the car. Come on. Oh, I see. They're on KLA's payroll. Looks like they're all getting in the car, and they're huddling together and getting their story straight. Get a shot of the car. Sorry, Dad. I didn't think you'd come to this. How did you make the captain's leg grow back? I didn't. The leg grew back, didn't it? It did, but all I did was believe that God would answer the captain's prayer. Now, there you have it, folks. You can see with your own eyes, they're in the car right now, getting their story straight. All of them together, the people that got healed, the miracle boy, and the father, who's a reporter for KLA. How did you know that my Miguel will see again? Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, didn't I tell you not to read the Bible? Glad he did. <laughs> Me too. I just wish you would understand that, Dad. Uh, why don't you show him the statue? It helped me understand. It's a great idea. Why don't you take him to the church? Church? Dad, please, can we go? Now? Please, Dad, there's something I need to show you. It's important. All right, uh, why don't we drop off Maria and the captain first, and then we'll take you over to the church. Deal? Deal. Come on, Dad, look closely. Can't you see how much Jesus loves this blind man? He loves you just as much as he loves this blind man. I see. Come on, I'll show you the inside.
Most people are blind towards God, like the blind man in the statue. Mm. But God wants us all to see him. He wants us all to follow him. Follow him? How? By believing in Jesus. So simple, yet so profound. We adults have a special way of overcomplicating things. How are you, Pastor McWhorter? Oh, I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. See, you brought your dad with you. Can you please explain to him why he should believe in Jesus? Sure. If you'd like to know. Sure, I want to know. Uh, we've all, the whole world, been separated from God because of our sin. But God loves us. God created us. And he wants to have a relationship with us. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sin, so that we could once again be reconnected with God. Well, I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. We're all sinners. Every single one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus came, to die for our sins and not to condemn us, but to save us. Save us from what? From eternal separation from God. You mean from being sent to hell? You see, God doesn't send us to hell. God gives us free will, power of choice. See, it's up to us to decide whether or not we want to spend eternity with him or not. And all we need to do is believe? That's all. That sounds too good to be true. That's why it's called the good news. Oh, that's the choir getting ready for Easter Sunday. Brian, are you a good singer? Yeah. Would you like to sing with them? I mean, if it's OK with your dad? That's well, OK with Daddy. You want to sing? Sure. Let's go. I need to see you in the conference room, alone. Uh, w why don't you wait over there, OK? I'll be right back. I promise. You blew it, Simon. Can you heal a deformed hand? I can't heal anybody. But you healed the soldier's leg, didn't you? I did heal the soldier's leg. But when you pray for people, they get healed. Isn't that right? Stop. I said stop. You don't have permission to interview my son. This is your son? Yes. Let's go, Brian. Uh, wait a minute. If this is your son, then why don't you interview him for your show? Because I didn't know it was my son. Oh, you just found out that this is your son. I didn't know that he is the miracle boy. He says he doesn't perform miracles. So what is KLA up to? This is insane. Follow me, Sam. Well, there you have it. Brian Weber told me he cannot heal anyone while his father, KLA's very own Simon Weber, interrupted my interview and whisked him away to his car. Yes, you heard correctly. KLA Simon Weber is the father of Brian Weber, the so-called miracle boy. And this proves my theory that KLA's miracle story is really just one big made-up story to boost their ratings. But wait, there's more. Guess who was in the car with them? Let's get in the car. Come on. None other than the two people who claimed the miracle healings, Captain Iverson and Maria Mendez. Hmm. He made you look like a scam artist. I can't believe he's got Brian saying that. What he got you saying wasn't any better. I spent half the day today with a man whose leg grew back and a woman whose baby was blind and now is able to see. We got the truth here. Brookwood is the one that's twisting it. We can turn this around, Frank. It's not what the uppers want. They want you gone. What? 
They want the story to die even if your career dies with it. What did I do wrong? You want me to play the tape again? You would fire me for seeming like a scam artist when you full well know that I'm hey, not? Hey, 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 I like you. I enjoy working with you, but I got a boss. Who got a boss? I'm sorry. Oh, and that's it. You get two weeks severance pay and any vacation time you have coming. Let's go, Brian. your job. I told you not to read the Bible. Captain Iverson and Marie are sure glad I did. Why would you tell Brookwood that you didn't heal anybody? Frank showed me the interview. I told him that I didn't heal anybody, but I also told him that God did. You did? You know that jerk. He must have edited that part out to make us look bad. Take the garage entrance. Hello? Yes? Excuse me? Now hold on a second, he didn't do anything wrong. Fine. Great, Brian. Just got suspended. What were you thinking? I was thinking of how much God loves people. Oh yeah, he must really love the two of us to get me fired and you suspended from school. I don't understand it, but I believe God has a reason for this. Well, I'm sure glad somebody still has a positive outlook on life. Yeah? What is with all the protesters outside? What exactly happened today? Sure you want to know? Yeah, positive. Well, I got fired, and Brian got suspended from school. What? Why didn't you call me? I want to tell you over the phone. Oh, God, none of, none of this makes any sense. <sighs> no, it doesn't. But everybody seems to think that I put Brian up to some sort of scam to get higher ratings. No, Frank doesn't think that, does he? No, Frank doesn't. But somebody above him sure wants everybody to think that. That's not fair. Oh, tell me about it. Okay, good. hold on. Let's see. It's the apartment manager. The apartment manager? Hello. Hi, can we help you? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to move. We are not prepared to deal with these protesters. There is a public disturbance clause right here in this contract, which legally allows me to terminate your lease at any time. Okay, but we haven't done anything wrong, so. Would you like me to just let in everyone who wants to come in here? Look, how about if we went away for a couple of days? Just until this whole thing settles down. I don't think you quite understand. We prefer low profile tenants here. Oh yeah? And when do you want us to leave? Oh, well, let's see. It's right here, page two, one week. One week. Mm -hmm. You expect us to find a place, pack and move in a week? Are you crazy? <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, wait. Okay, she cannot legally do that, right? Well, apparently she thinks she can. Who is that? It's Melissa. Someone from the news is at the practice asking questions. What channel? I don't know. She didn't say. I think I know who that is. No, oh, you don't think Brookwood would stoop that low? Lower. 
Okay, so what do we do? We've got to get the truth out somehow. Okay, and how do we do that? I mean, you're not on the news anymore. I got an idea. So you admit that you had nothing to do with Captain Iverson's leg growing back, or with Maria's son being healed. God healed them. And you weren't even there. Not when they were healed but I talked to them before that. Well, you did, did you? Well, what did you tell them? I told the captain that I believe God would answer his prayer, and I told Maria to go home and pray for her son. So really, it was Captain Iberson who prayed for his leg to heal, not you. Actually, he was praying for his wife because she was sad, and he wanted her to be happy again. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Now, you're telling me that uh, he prayed uh, to God for his wife to be happy, and God did so by having his leg grow back? Why not? He is God. <laughs> Cute. How come you're wearing glasses? Because I'm nearsighted. Huh. You'd think that uh, God would take that nearsightedness away from you, uh, since he is God. Excuse me, Robert. Simon, let me finish. I'm just asking a question. Seems like a, a small task uh, compared to uh, healing a blind baby. Are you about done with your insults, Robert? Why don't we uh, see how all this prayer stuff works, shall we? I'd like to invite onto the stage Angelina. Angelina, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Now, Angelina has a spinal muscular atrophy, and she has lost the ability to walk. Brian, do you believe that God can make her walk again? We came on your show to truthfully tell Brian's story and not to be ambushed, and certainly not to perform miracles. It's okay, Daddy. I can explain. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Brookwood, I don't understand how it all works, but I believe that God could heal my near sinus if he wanted to. He could also heal Angelina. God can pop out a mountain range in downtown Los Angeles, but no one can tell him what to do and when to do it. Okay, so it sounds like what you're telling me, Brian, is that maybe right now God doesn't feel like healing Angelina. Or maybe God is taking a nap. <laughs> God loves you, and he wants you to love him. He wants you to understand that you don't have to experience a miracle to be a miracle. Well, I don't see any miracles happening here today. Perhaps God is too busy uh, popping up mountain ranges in downtown Los Angeles. That's enough. Let's go, Brian. We don't have to put up with this, and neither do you. <laughs> Come on back when God's in a healing mood. Well, there you have it. I'm sorry, folks. There are no miracles here today. See the look on that boy's face? I should put an end to him. It backfired. You were too tough on him, you lost your audience. They loved him. Hated you. My audience loves me because I am tough. It's different when you're talking to a sweet nine-year-old kid. Okay. What else do you want me to do? Nothing. I'll take care of it from now on. Yeah, but, uh... I'm so sorry, Dad. Well, it's not your fault. I should have never dragged you on his show. I failed everybody. <laughs> I've, I've failed you. I've failed Mom. 
and I feel God. <laughs> Questions, kid. Where are you taking me? I said no questions, now shut your mouth. Look, kid, no one's gonna hurt you, okay? Will you take me home? When you're done, kid. With what? There's nothing I can do for you. I just ruined people's lives. Are you okay, kid? <laughs> I saw what that thug Brookwood did to you. You say the word and he's dead by the morning. You are touched by God, my friend. They just mock you. They mock God. And God doesn't have to put up with that. But you can't kill him. <laughs> you obviously don't know who you're talking to, do you? <laughs> do you? I mean, you shouldn't kill him. It's not what God wants. Look, uh, God took out everyone but no one his family. This slime, this, this, this louse, Brookwood, is no better than a slime God's already flooded out of existence. But Jesus came so that even people like him could be forgiven. Well, you had faith in believing God for a lady to grow back. Now this guy's gone off and made you look like a liar. Do you think that's what God wants? I don't know what God wants anymore. My dad got fired. I got suspended. We're all being kicked out of our apartment. Yeah. Hmm. You don't know much about thugs, do you? There's thugs everywhere. Politics, media, police department. There's even thugs in the church. You just mess with the wrong thug, that's all. It's no big deal. But I just believe in God. We don't want anyone. We don't want people believing in God. Nobody. Why not? Because you become a threat to them. If you can heal someone today, what are you going to do tomorrow? But I can't heal anyone. Only God can. God listens to you, does he not? Actually, it's the opposite. I listen to him. <laughs> yeah. You're special. You have a gift. God gave you a gift. Don't let these little lives steal that from you. Why am I here? I need you to pray for my son. He's been shot. 
and he's in a coma in a hospital. I'm sorry. Um, please listen to God for me and tell me that he's willing to heal my son, please. Okay. You shouldn't have shot Benny. What? I didn't shoot anybody. I, it was an accident. He ran into the middle of a gunfight and he got... Hey, how'd you know his name? How do you know my son's name? How'd you know I'm the one who shot him? God wants to heal you, Don Carlo. You know my name? Come on. Heal me? Why? Benny's the one who got shot. God wants to heal your heart. Anger and hatred are eating you up. <laughs> really? Hey, look, hatred's my business. I want you to love, not to hate. Now let's go to the hospital. Will you pray for my son there? Yes, I will. Really? Let's go. Come on, kid. Let's go. Hey, you guys take him to the hospital. I'm not going too much heat on me right now. Hold it right there. <laughs> you got the kid in there? Yeah, I got him in there. <laughs> Pray for him, kid. Brian. Dad! I'm so glad you're here. And you brought Captain Iperson. You're the soldier who grew his leg back. Yeah, and you're the thug that kidnapped Brian. He just wanted me to pray for Benny. He's in a coma. Well, yeah, make it quick, because the police will be here any minute. The police? Come, come on, kid. Pray quickly. OK. God, please heal Benny if it is your will. Please heal Benny. Okay, we're getting out of LA. Oh yeah? And when did that happen? Uh, well, look, I already started packing, okay? We have to be out of this apartment in a week anyway. And where exactly are we going? I don't know. I don't care. Look, our son got kidnapped, remember? No, I know, but uh, I think you're overreacting. Yeah, Mom, God's watching over me. Yeah? I'm not very satisfied with the way he's been doing that. Well, I think this whole kidnapping thing has actually been for the good. No, no, not for me. Can I help you? Hi, my name is Becky. I'm a friend of Brian's. Is he here? Mm, Brian told me about you. You want to come in? Sure. Come on. Brian, you have a visitor! You were right about the Bible. I've been reading it. It's amazing. I told you. So, does everyone at school think I'm crazy? Pretty much, except for Miss Jackson. She got fired. Sorry to hear that. I heard your dad got fired as well. Yeah, unfortunately. But I've seen God do amazing things. I want to see God do amazing things. 
Let me show you something. It's over at the church. Rub the lasagna, ma. What are we gonna do? Well, I mean, your father and I, we've been thinking of opening a restaurant or two. Yeah, but are we gonna be safe? Hey, that's up to the man upstairs. Carmela, someone put out a contract on the Miracle Kid. Who would put out a contract on a kid? We don't know. We're gonna find out. I don't want you to worry. I'm gonna take care of it. Hey, eat. I have to show Becky something at the church. I promise it won't take very long. Mm, honey, no, you can't leave the house, okay? There are still way too many people outside. We can sneak out the garage exit. Dad, please, I promise, no one will notice. I uh, can go with him. No, honey, you were with him when he got kidnapped. Why don't you both come? Besides, Dad's already seen it. Seen what? The statue. Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, look, if it makes him happy, Let's just go. OK. OK, we can all go. Hey, but we have to be back here to pack in an hour. Deal? Deal. OK. Let's go. Come on, guys. Let's go. Hang out right here, OK, so we can lock the door. Reach the Weavers, please give your name and number after the tone. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, Captain Iverson? No, Carla. We have a situation. Yeah, I'm gonna check the parking garage for the car. Yeah, I'm right behind you, Captain. make all these plans for the future, like we're in control of it. We're not really, are we? Doesn't seem like it. I don't know. Maybe Brian's right and there is a god up there somewhere. Maybe we're not just an accident that happened by chance. <laughs> that would explain the miracles. Do you think the miracles actually happened? Come on, guys, hurry up. <laughs> Take it easy. What's so important up at this church anyway? Trust me, Mom. God wants you to see something. Becky! Becky, I've been looking all over for you. How dare you indoctrinate my daughter? Becky's your daughter? Come on, don't try to pretend you didn't know. God wants to show himself to you, Mr. Brookwood. God? There is no God to show me anything. Come on, Becky, let's go. No, Daddy, you don't understand. Get over here. There's an ambulance on the way. Becky, Becky, don't leave. Don't leave, baby, please. Don't leave me. Why would anyone want to shoot my daughter? I don't think she was the target. The uppers. Yeah. Daddy. Daddy. It's OK, honey. It's OK. Just breathe, OK? Are you OK, Brian? I'm OK. Stay with us, Becky. I'm so sorry. I wish there was more I could do. There is. Let's pray. Yeah, let's pray for Becky. Okay, okay. Lord, please do not let Becky die. God have mercy. Please don't go. Nothing is impossible for you. Please come. 
Becky! 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 Becky, no, please! No, no, please! Please, God, please, no! Oh, please, God, no! Becky! I, I love you so much. I love you so much, baby. Daddy, can I go and see what Brian wanted to show me? Yes, 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 of course you can. <sighs> Thank you. I didn't do anything. What did you want to show me again? I wanted to show you Jesus. I would love to see him. This past week has been a week of extraordinary miracles. God has shown us that he is still at work today, the same way he was 2,000 years ago, still performing miracles. He wants us to believe that miracles are possible, but most of all, he wants us to believe in him. The greatest miracle in our life is getting to know Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. By believing in Him, we're set free. Set free from the bondage of sin and death and our promised eternal life. Christ is our Savior. He died for us and rose again. When we believe in Him and repent of our sins, we're born again. We're saved. For those of you who don't know Him, standing at the door, He's knocking on the door. He's saying, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. I'll come in and be with you. Please let him in. Get to know him. If you want a personal relationship with him, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for my sin. I turn from it now. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior and be my friend. I choose to follow you. From this moment forward, I choose to follow you, Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I'm not a big fan of texting. Everybody seems to be doing it these days, except for me. Take out your cell phone, if you have it. Text two words, two simple words to somebody. I believe. If you do this, you're making a stand for Jesus Christ. And make it now while you still can. And now young Brian, with the help of this wonderful choir, will perform the closing song. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I believe in the God who made me. I believe in his holy word. I delight in the things he tells me. It's the best news I've ever heard. I believe Jesus loves me at this moment. I believe, I believe. May his will be done. Father, glorify your son. Let his promises come true. I believe.
nation. I'm a child in his holy kingdom, and there is no shortage there. I believe. I believe he will call me home. I believe.